Hello everyone, Steven here from Rattle Essence and welcome back to another fragrance review. This time we'll be taking a look at a bit of an older fragrance by Dolce & Gabbana and this one is simply entitled The One. Now here's the bottle. This is a pretty classy, timeless looking bottle, I think. I actually like the way it looks and I like the way it looks on my shelf. So this fragrance was released in March of 2008 and while the perfumer I don't think has been made available to the general public, we do know that the creative director is one of the co-founders of the company Dolce & Gabbana and his name is Stefano Gabbana. Now Stefano Gabbana is of course very involved in the creative making process that uh, his fragrances undergo and this fragrance was made in collaboration of IFF, which stands for International Flavors and Fragrances, as well as Procter & Gamble. Now Procter & Gamble is of course the parent company for many brands, uh, one of which is Lacoste. And in the past I've reviewed a couple of Lacoste fragrances like L1212 Noir, I've also reviewed Lacoste Live, and both times I have emailed the company and asked them who the perfumer is for those fragrances, and each time I've received a, a reply from Lacoste saying nothing more than Procter & Gamble is the perfumer. Now, of course, Procter & Gamble is nothing more than a company. Uh, I do think that there is a perfumer who should be credited for the creation of these compositions. Unfortunately, no names have been thrown out there. So just keep in mind that the parent company is Procter & Gamble, and they worked in collaboration with IFF to create this fragrance. Now, being that it was released in 2008 since then, they have released a few several different versions of it. They have a couple flankers. They have the one gentleman, the one sport. I think I like gentleman a little bit more than I like sport, but make sure you give it a try and see if it's to your liking. I'm not particularly crazy by uh, about either one of them, but make sure you try it before you buy them. And then they also have a few limited edition versions of the one. They have one called Collector's Edition, which is in a nice red bottle. I believe it has like a gold or silver coin coin on the front. They also have another one, I think it's called Limited Platinum Edition. Now please note that all three of those, the Platinum Edition, the Collector's Edition, and the Red Bottle, and this one all smell exactly the same. So it's really up to you which one you want to buy, pending availability and accessibility and price, of course. So uh, with this fragrance, Stefano Gabbana wanted to create a Nuomo, a men's fragrance that would be a future classic or a fragrance that would be a classic and a timeless fragrance for years to come. So I'm going to let you know if I think that they succeeded in doing that. Next up, let's take a look at the presentation. Uh, the box for this fragrance is pretty standard, nothing to marvel at. You have the name of the company, the name of the fragrance embossed here in the front, some relevant information at the bottom, UPC code, serial number, ingredients at the back. I do apologize, it is a little banged up. It happened with uh, storage and whatnot. I like over here on the back how they have a little flap that's cut out to make for easy opening. But as far as that goes, that's pretty much the presentation for the box. Nothing too much to marvel at. As far as the bottle goes, I think this is a very nice bottle. Uh, it's very classy, timeless. It looks great on my shelf. I love the way that it looks. You have the name of the company and the fragrance embossed here on the front. Nice little texture to it. Uh, that's pretty much it. On the bottom you'll find a sticker with some more relevant information which should coincide with the ones found on the bottom of the box. As far as the cap goes, this isn't actually wood even though it looks like it's made out of wood. Um, it's actually a sleeve that's placed over what I think is metal. It's not a very heavy type of metal but the cap does have some weight to it. The distribution is actually okay. Could be a little bit better. And that has pretty much been the presentation for the one. Now, Dolce & Gabbana is the one opens up with a very rich note of amber. And I would like to say that it's not so much a note as it is an accord. Of course, amber, uh, for those of you who don't, who don't know, in perfumery is nothing more than a fantasy note which means that it's usually an accord of different other notes which come together to give the impression of amber. And of course fossilized amber that was found in scarabs actually went extinct with the dinosaurs. And whatever amber is left over has such a low odor profile and such a mild smell that its use in perfumery would be trivial next to insignificant. So instead of using amber as a note which also would be very expensive, they use a combination of three different ingredients and it's a blend of labdanum, benzoin, and vanilla, the former two being resins that come from trees. 
In this fragrance, you do have this amber accord in the opening, and I smell a little bit of vanilla. I smell benzoin. Benzoin is a resin which gives a vanillic overtone, but it also has a smoky nuance to it as well. Some people say that it smells medicinal. In this fragrance, it doesn't come across smelling smoky or anything, so don't be deterred or turned off by it. But I also pick up on a good deal, I think, of labdanum. It may just be my mind playing tricks on me, but I do get this resinous sweetness enveloping the opening of the fragrance which I think gives it a very unique take on amber. Of course, amber is a very common accord that's used in many fragrances. It usually serves as a base note, which means you're not going to get it until the fragrance dries down a few hours after you initially apply it. With this fragrance, I think it's so concentrated and so strong that it's the first thing you notice about this fragrance and it lingers for a while until, of course, the fragrance dies out and the longevity on this fragrance isn't that great. Now, you do get this very pungent amber accord in the opening and and there's a sweetness to it, like I mentioned, but it's not cloyingly sweet. And that's one thing that I like about it. It's sweet, but just enough to lure you in and to retain its maturity and its sophistication. I think the amber accord is primary. Secondary to that is the note of tobacco. Now, I love and own and wear many fragrances containing the note of tobacco. One of those being The Dreamer by Versace. I think Versace's The Dreamer is a fragrance that contains a tobacco note that is more on the lighter, herbal, and cleaner side. This is the variety of tobacco that I actually favor. Uh, this tobacco is very moist, kind of syrupy. It almost has like a fruiting nuance to it. I know whenever I think of tobacco, I think of my grandfather's pipe tobacco that was cherry flavored. So I think of like a cherry overtone to it. And when you smell this fragrance, a lot of people will tell you they smell some dried fruits in there. Um, of course, I do think it's the amber giving the sweetness that could possibly be perceived as coming from the fruits. But I think that the tobacco is what gives this fragrance that almost fruiting nuance or overtone to the composition. And I love the tobacco tobacco note in this fragrance. I just think it's so excellently done. A lot of people say they smell ginger in this fragrance. I do get some of like that sharpness in it, almost giving this fragrance uh, an astringent quality. I think that the ginger in this fragrance isn't that strong though. I have another one by Burberry called Burberry Sport Ice. This is by far the strongest ginger that I have smelled in a fragrance, with the second one probably being Diorome Sport or something like that. I can tell you that in comparison, this one does not contain nearly as much ginger. An herbal note that I do get in this fragrance, however, is the note of cardamom. Cardamom is, of course, a spice. It's used a lot in Asian cooking, and it's also used in other very popular fragrances like La Nuit de L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent. And what I've noticed is that fragrances that contain cardamom are actually very appealing to the masses and are fragrances that are likely to get you compliments. I can tell you right now that this fragrance made it really high up in my top 20 uh, designer fall list and it, it's also one of my most complimented fragrances because every time that I wear this fragrance somebody tells me how good I smell or they inquire about which fragrance I'm wearing and I just think that this fragrance does really really well so I think that this is a very mature smelling fragrance but not dated it doesn't smell old it, it does smell like a classic I mentioned that in the intro and I think this is going to be a classic classic timeless fragrance for years to come. The amber in this fragrance is just done so nicely and even though I think this fragrance says it contains like neroli and grapefruit, you don't really get too strong of a citrus opening in this fragrance and whatever citrus you do get is only in like the first you know, minute or two of the fragrance and then it very quickly recedes to the background. But the dominant players in this fragrance are amber, tobacco, a little bit of ginger and also cardamom in my opinion. Now this does lay on a bed of cedar wood. Of course it's a synthetic cedar wood so it, it's not going to come across smelling overly natural but I do think that the prominent base note that you will get in this fragrance is indeed that amber accord. Really nice fragrance. Honestly one of the best designer smells that I have ever come across and this is really one of my favorite fragrances. I wear this a lot. I wear this so much in fact that I happen to be wearing this on the day when I propose to my girlfriend. So I think this is a great fragrance. I think this is a perfect um, all year round fragrance despite the uh, performance which I'll talk about a little bit later on. And I think in terms of seasons and occasions you can really wear this anywhere. The versatility on this fragrance is great. Um, you're going to get compliments wearing it and it's a very inoffensive smell. One of my favorites. Let's take a look at the rating. 
First up we have uniqueness and overall smell and the smell for me on this fragrance is honestly a 10 out of 10. I think that this is a great fragrance. I think you're going to get compliments wearing this fragrance. It's inoffensive. The ladies love it. I love the way that it smells on me. It truly is a unique fragrance. It doesn't really smell too much like other fragrances that I have worn, owned, and you know uh, collected in the past this one does stand out and it's almost become a reference point it's kind of like the default fragrance like whenever you smell another fragrance uh, subsequent to the release of this one maybe something like 1270 by Frappen you might say something like well it smells a lot like Dolce Gabbana is the one and not vice versa because of their release so I think that this one is a great fragrance unique stands out I think it smells amazing and it's a very pleasant smell and it truly is one of the best I think of the designer market today hence the reason why it's been so successful next up we have longevity and unfortunately I couldn't give this any more than a 5 out of 10 I do get 4 to 6 hours which is expected for an eau de toilette and I think this one is just average sometimes it does fall below average uh, due to the price point I think you can afford to wear it a little bit more often and I think this one would work best in close encounter scenarios I had to give it a 5 out of 10. As far as projection goes, same thing, a 5 out of 10. I think the projection could have also been a lot better for this fragrance. Unfortunately, it doesn't really jump up off the skin. When it does, it stays uh, within an arm's length. It never really radiates beyond that. So I think that if you're wearing it in a scenario where there isn't a considerable distance between yourself and the next person, this would do really well. You will be bound to get noticed. Um, but if you're wearing it in a wide open area, you really have to get close to somebody in order for them to even notice or pick up on the fact that you're wearing a fragrance. So the projection is compromised a little bit. As far as versatility goes, this is truly a 9 out of 10. Uh, I don't think this is a unisex fragrance. I think the spices, the amber, the fruiting nuances to it, I think really give it like a masculine characteristic. So I don't think it's unisex, but of course wear what you like. Don't let gender designations phase you. I think in terms of scenarios, you can wear this casually, dressed up, dressed down. You can wear it on a night out because it has that sweetness. I think that in terms of seasons, this would probably work better in the hotter weather, even though I think the composition itself is evocative of colder weather, but the performance really doesn't allow it to work too well in the colder weather. But I think as far as the composition goes, this is a year-round fragrance, and I think that this would work better for a more mature gentleman. I can see somebody maybe 21 and up wearing this fragrance, maybe even a mature teenager in high school, but of course that's just a recommendation. And then last up we have presentation. I gave this a 9 out of 10. I think the bottle is really nice, even though I don't think the cap is, you know, a, a tr real metal or anything like that, and the box isn't anything too fancy. I think that the cap, the color of the liquid, the name of the fragrance, the presentation is classic and timeless, and that's what they were going for. Overall, I have to give this fragrance a 9 out of 10. I love this fragrance. The smell is fantastic. It truly is one of my favorites. The only thing that held this fragrance back a little bit is the performance. If the performance were a little bit better, say if it were released in an eau de parfum concentration like some companies like Hermes are doing with their fragrances, I think that this one would be perfect. But unfortunately, as it currently stands, I can't give it anything more than a 9 out, of, 9 out of 10 because even though it smells great, what's the point if it only smells great for 4 hours and if you have to dig your nose into your skin to pick up on this smell? So there you have it guys. Thank you so much for watching. That was my review of The One by Dolce & Gabbana. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos and frequent giveaways. If you have any questions, shoot me a message. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So again, thank you for watching. This has been Stephen with another fragrance review from Red Essence. See you soon.